So question number one, the answer should be 182. So let's figure out how you get the answer of 182. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to substitute in for your variables. So instead of 2 times a, I'm going to do 2 times 5 to the second power, times 2, because b is 2, minus 2 times c, which is 3, to the second power. Okay, so you had to substitute in for your variables. Now I'm going to follow the order of operations. Order of operations tell me to do parentheses first. So 2 times 5 is 10, and that 10 is to the second power. Nothing else is in parentheses. Order of operations tells me the second step I need to do are my exponents, and I have two exponents. So 10 to the second power is 100, and 3 to the second power is 9. Next part of order of operations, you're multiplying and dividing. So I have multiplying here, and I have multiplying here. 100 times 2 is 200, and 2 times 9 is 18. So I have 200 minus 18, which is 182. Final answer. Okay, question number 2. Your answer to question number two should be negative 27. The reason it is negative 27, negative 3 to the third power means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. So let's do our first negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9. And positive 9 times negative 3, that's where I got my negative 27. Here's a tip. If your base is negative and your exponent is odd, it's going to be an, a um, negative answer. If your base is negative and your exponent is even, it's going to be a positive answer. Yes, yes, no matter what. Even if we had negative 3 to the 11th power, it's going to be a negative something, 3 to the 11th power. Okay. Now. You all also can use a calculator on this. So since you can use a calculator, this shouldn't have been that big of an issue. But here's the deal. These parentheses are important. If you put in your calculator negative 3 to the third power, your calculator is going to say negative sign out front 3 times 3 times 3, which in this case it would work out okay. But if there was an even number of exponents there, it would not work out okay. So keep that in mind. Parentheses there are important. You can put those parentheses in with those scientific calculators. All right, question number three. Your answer for question number three is one. Positive one. Let's talk about how you get positive one. So just like the, one of the other problems we did already today, we're substituting in for the variable. So the absolute value of five minus three times two. I'm going to do 3 times 2 first, so that's going to give me 3 times 2 is 6. Sorry, that should be a minus there. And 5 minus 6 is negative 1, but this is absolute value. So the absolute value of negative 1 is a positive 1. All right, question number 4. The answer to question number four is 36m minus 8. You could have negative 8 plus 36m. Those mean the same thing. They're just the same terms in a different order. Okay? But usually you'll see the term with the variable listed first. All right, so let's talk about how you to solve this problem. So the first thing that we would need to do to solve this problem is distribute. We need to do 4 times 2m, which is 8m, 4 times negative 5m, which is negative 20m, and 4 times negative 6, which is negative 24. Then I'm going to distribute my 8 over there. So 8 times 6m is 48m, and 8 times 2 is 16. So now I have this big, long expression after I distribute. 
So I'm going to combine my like terms. Anything that has an M can be combined. So I have an 8M, a negative 20M, and a 48M. If I was doing this, I would combine my two positive ones first. 8 plus 48 gives me 56M, and then minus 20M. That would leave me with 36M. Now I'm going to do my constants, the ones that don't have exponents, right here and right here. Negative 24 plus 16, that gives me a negative 8. And there's your answer. Question, Gracie. Okay, we're ready for question 5. So in question 5, we also need to distribute first. But in question 5, we're not just distributing a one-third, we're distributing a negative one-third. So a negative one-third times a positive 30, that's going to give you a negative 10x. And then a negative one-third times a positive 99 is going to give you a negative 33. Now nothing changed with your negative 6x and nothing changed with your minus 1. So now we're on, oh, didn't tell you the answer first, sorry. Now we're going to combine like terms, which the like terms are by each other, that's kind of nice. Negative 6x and negative 10x leave me with negative 16x. And then negative 33 minus 1 is a negative 34. I would accept negative 34 minus 16x. But a lot of these are going to be multiple choice on your test. Again, a lot of them are going to be multiple choice. So keep in mind, multiple choice is going to list the one that has the variable first. Okay? Because that's the more proper way to write it. Kaden, how did I get negative 34? If I have negative 33 and I take away one more, no, that'd be negative 33 plus 1. If I am at negative 33 on a number line and I move one more to the left, now I'm at negative 34. If I owe someone $33 and I spend another dollar, now I owe them $34. Same sign, add and keep. Continuing. Number six. The only thing it wants you to do in number six is tell me which property. What changed about number six? From the left to the right, what is the only difference in this problem? The parentheses, so change the grouping. And when you change the grouping, think about your groups of friends. Have you ever had an adult say, you shouldn't associate with that group of friends? Think of it like that. When the grouping changes, that's the associative property, who you're with. Those numbers, two is no longer allowed to associate with five, and now must hang out with seven. Two's pretty popular. All right, looking at number seven. First of all, your answer to number seven is 34. So let's go over why your answer is 34. It says if 5y minus 6 equals negative 26, what is the value of negative 8y plus 2? So the first thing that you have to do is you need to solve your two-step equation, and you need to figure out what is y. So if I'm figuring out what is y, I'm going to add 6. That's going to give me 5y equals 20, divide by 5, so y equals 4. So now that I know what y is, I need to go over there and put it into my expression. Before I do that, I made a mistake here. Negative 26 plus 6 is a negative 20, sorry, which would mean this is a negative 4. That would have totally messed me up for the rest of my problem then. Thank you. So I'm going to take my negative 4 and I'm going to put it in place of the y. So a negative 8 times a negative 4 plus 2. Negative 8 times negative 4 is a positive 32. And then adding on your 2... That's where I got my 34 from. All right, moving on to question 8. The answer to question number 8 
is negative 1. x equals negative 1. So this is a problem that has multiple steps. One thing I notice is that I have a variable on both sides of my equation, but before I can get rid of that variable on the right, I need to first get rid of that 2. So I'm going to start off by multiplying each side by 2. So these are gone now, and that leaves me with 9x plus 7. But this 2, if I'm multiplying that by this 2, that's kind of like the distributive property. I need to multiply everything inside of here by 2. 2 times negative 3x is negative 6x. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So I got rid of that fraction-looking thing over there. I got rid of this over here. I'm good to go now. All right, so I want to get rid of the 9x over there, so I'm going to subtract 9x. That's going to leave me with negative 15x minus 8 equals 7. Two-step equation now. I'm going to get rid of this minus 8, so I'm going to add 8. That gives me negative 15x equals positive 15. 7 plus 8 is 15. And now to get rid of multiplying by negative 15, I'm going to divide by negative 15. 15 divided by negative 15 is negative 1. Okay? As a reminder, this will be on YouTube, so you can watch it again. If there's one of these that you missed that you want to see again, it's on YouTube. All right, number nine, before I do anything, I want to distribute. So I'm distributing this, sorry, the answer to this is negative three, by the way. Number nine is negative three. Starting off with distributive, five times five H is 25 H. Five times eight is 40. So now I have a variable on both sides. I want to get rid of the variable that's on my right by adding 15h. So that's going to leave me with 40h plus 40 equals negative 80. Now I'm going to subtract 40 from each side, leaving me with 40h equals negative 120, and divide by 40. That's how I got h equals negative 3. Looking at number 10, your answer to number 10, these are the ones that really were hard for you guys, if you remember. a equals 5x plus c. Because again, you're getting that a by itself. So let's talk about how to do that. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to want to get rid of that 5 over there. To get rid of that 5, you're going to multiply by 5 on both sides. So when I get rid of that, 5 times x is 5x. Sit at my desk. Sit at my desk. And over here, I have a minus c. So a is almost by itself. The only other thing that I need to do is add c. So when I do that, I get 5x plus c equals a. So the only, only difference here in this and my final answer is that I flip-flop sides. Okay, a is 5x plus c. So it took two steps in order to do that. All right, number 11. We are writing an inequality to represent the phrase, at least 10 dogs were brown. You can use any variable that you want to, okay? So again, it's going to be multiple choice, so they can use whatever variable they want. That part doesn't matter. We're obviously using 10 as our number, but the big thing here is which inequality symbol is it going to be? It says at least. At least means it could equal 10, so that's going to eliminate two of your choices right there. And then do you all think it's going to be greater than or less than? Greater than. 
meaning it could be 10 or it could be more than 10. Okay. Number 12, graph the solution on a number line. The solution is M is less than or equal to four. You would graph that. Whoops. You need a dot at the four and shade left. So let's talk about how I figured out how to do that. So when you solve this, you're subtracting nine and that leaves you with three M is less than or equal to 21. Now we're going to divide by three. Now you're dividing by a positive. When you divide by a positive, you do not reverse that symbol. When you divide by a positive, you do not reverse the symbol. So that, whoops, did I make a mistake? Oh, well, maybe it's because someone is distracting me. 21 minus 9 is 12. So then when you divide 12 by 3, that is where I got my 4. So if you want to graph that m is less than or equal to 4, it needs to be a closed dot at the 4, and everything less than 4 would be to the left. Number 13. Your answer to 13 is x is greater than 2. So let's figure out how I got that answer. So the first thing that I see is parentheses, meaning distribute. So distribute first. Two times x is two x. Two times negative three is negative six. Nothing else about my problem has changed yet. Now some people might be like, oh, it has a two x on both sides, no solution. No, no. This is a negative two x and this is a positive two x. They are not the same thing, okay? So now I'm going to get rid of my 2x that's on the right by subtracting it. And that's going to give me 2 minus 4x is less than negative 6. Next thing I'm going to do is get rid of this 2 by subtracting the 2. And that's going to give me negative 4x is less than negative 8. And my last step is a, the big one. My last step is dividing by a negative. So whenever you divide by a negative, that is when you reverse your sign. So this is going to become x is greater than positive 2. So that made that question the, the difficult part because you had to remember your inequality rule of when you divide by a negative on both sides of your inequality, your inequality sign reverses. Number 14, this is a compound inequality. When you write your answer, your answer should have been four is less than or equal to X is less than 12. That should be your answer. So let's figure out how I got that answer. So from the middle area of my compound inequality, I have this plus four. To get rid of the plus four, I need to subtract four. So I need to do that here, and I need to do that over here as well, okay? And obviously from the middle, because I'm, I'm getting rid of that plus four in the middle. So when I do that, eight minus four is four. This cancels out, leaving you with X, and 16 minus four is 12. So that's where you got your answer from. Your signs don't reverse or anything. This is one of those, remember when you said it was a mashup, this is an and. So don't pick an or, remember multiple choice on this. You're not gonna change this to an or. This is an and problem. They're not gonna have that word and, but I'm just letting you know.